Hey folks, how's everyone doing today? Rudy with Alpha Investments. Today we're gonna, this is actually gonna be kind of a four or five part video. This is just one of the chunks I wanted to really get out there and discuss with everybody because of the, um, this was a very large collection transaction that was completed here at the store. And uh, I wanted to go over uh, the pros and cons. And uh, this is gonna take a lot of videos because it's a massive transaction. And uh, all kinds of complete sets, artist proof, old cards, weird stuff, uh, foils, regular, vintage, complete. You know, it's kind of weird to see a bunch of complete sets too. That's not very common anymore. So that's I want to give you a little intro here. So this is going to be one chunk of many videos you're going to see over the next week or so. All right, so part of this big collection, we had a collector's edition set. You guys remember how I did the other video? I told you I always like to collect those extra empty boxes. Well, this is why. Because I get a lot of sets that a lot of times don't have the outer box and packaging. So before we get too far into the video, um, I'll, I'll just flip through to give you guys an example of what we're looking at here. Uh, I have not audited every exact card, but I'm assuming it's going to be a complete set because I'm seeing 3, 6, uh, 7, 8, yeah, it's all 10 dual lands. Um, usually, I usually kind of look for the certain rare and key cards at first just to make sure that we actually are looking at a complete set. Let's jump over to the blues. Yep, so we got our three power cards there. We got a little doppelgamer and brain. Okay, copy artifact also. Okay, so yeah, we're probably looking at a complete set here. Black cards, seeing the rares, tutors. Okay, and then of course, um, back here, green, natural selections, berserks, basic lands, red, wheel of fortune, and shivan. Yep, okay, so yeah, we're probably looking at a complete set here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, one nasty thing about this collection that really happened that was just painful, if you guys haven't noticed by now, the Black Lotus, the Mox, and the Gauntlet are located next to the Binder Rings. So, the Gauntlet, um, you can see a nice dent right there where the Binder Ring hit it. So again, we have Binder damage. Unfortunately, this happens quite a bit. That one's not too bad, but it is. We got a Mox here, and unfortunately, you got a nice dent right through the middle of the card. And it's just, it kind of sucks. It is what it is because you really can't grade or it, it just you have to disclose that if I ever when I go to sell them. And of course, the lotus right into the card completely sucks. You got this large dent across the card here. Um, I mean, besides the little edge damage there in the corner, you've got almost like a mild crease on the edge of the card from being in the corner of the binder. Actually, it kind of is a crease. Actually, I'm gonna call that straight up crease. I probably overpaid for the card. So, yeah, you've got literally a crease on the Lotus in the corner. I completely overpaid for it then. Uh, crease, that should have been almost like damaged condition. I paid like light played. I don't even, ugh. So, we not only do you have a crease there, um, but then you also have a nice dent. So, we got ourselves not the greatest condition Lotus for the collector's edition. All of which could have been prevented and protected, but the expensive cards were on the first page right against the binder. And they were damaged. Now, again, everything else, if you look at it, like you go to the middle here, and sure enough, no damage, no problem. So, kind of is what it is, ladies and gentlemen, but that is part of dealing with it. Unfortunately, you know, I didn't catch that extra crease in the corner. I'm sure the buyer, the seller is probably going to see this video and go, yikes. But hey, deal's a deal. That's it. No big deal. We're going to move forward in life. And uh, we'll talk a few minutes about these collector edition ice cards because there's been a lot of conversation around it. And a lot of people always want me to discuss these uh, gold border cards a lot more. Um, I think I have probably just, I think maybe around 10 sets, maybe 12 sets of Collector's Edition between Ice and regular CEs. Um, again, I'm still not a huge fan of the product, the gold and how sensitive it is. You guys saw in the other video the other day where I, had, I showed the Lotus with the gold wear around it in the little case from, I think, a couple days ago, depending when you guys see the video. But that's part of it. You know, they're very sensitive cards, not a big fan, but obviously in 2020 with the prices and where everything is in the market, you know, there's definitely a place for these. And unfortunately, and fortunately, I definitely think they will continue to rise in value. Um, keep in mind, a lot of these were destroyed for reback cards and cut corners, and there was a lot of things like that that did take place. So obviously, if page one, you got yourself your, uh, I would say, power nine. You got your six of nine power. Obviously, Chaos Orb down here. Take a quick look at him. He looks very nice. Again, I spot checked a lot of these other ones. I see some little, little scratches and things, but nothing too dramatic. Rum. And up, oh, there's a mark. Damage. No, I'm kidding. But you know, you got your power ten there, time volt there. You got your tombs. You got your ices with a nice dark beta print. Same thing with basalt, infamous soul rings, um, copper tablet. One of my favorite uncommons there. You got J Monday. 
you got yourselves uh, the orbs, terrible jade monolith, infamous vaults. Um, I think, yeah, this is probably going to be a complete set. I have to do an exact all to make sure I'm not missing any particular cards. Uh, Scepter, of course, Larry Nevin's disc. You got yourself a bunch of uncommons. Uh, actually, I think sunglasses are rare. Well, I guess in collector's edition, everything's printed equally. It doesn't really matter. Um, the 10 dual lands, same thing. Um, I always feel that these are, they're still relatively cheap. I mean, obviously, they've gone up tremendously in the last couple of years compared to where they were originally. Um, but the biggest thing is obviously checking these binders. I'm going to check the edges here. Shouldn't be any damage because it's not the first page in. Yeah, we're fine. It just sucks the power and the best was like right there on the front and front and center. That's just painful, man. But anyway, so that's another weird thing to keep in mind is that when you deal with these ice cards, remember the circle of protection common card is just as rare as a black lotus. You have to remember the rarity of this. They all, they're printed equally. So again, collector's edition sets were what, 10,000, but they only actually printed what, nine or eight? And the international sets were like 5,000, but supposedly what, 4,500 were printed? I don't know. So just keep that in mind, the rarity of the commons and the rares and the lotus are all the same on um, gold bordered cards. So I do think that they are gonna continue to rise in value. I think there's gonna be a niche market. And as the years march forward, I think um, there's definitely going to be a place for this, especially in sleeves and the prices. I think it's legal to play with them in sleeves and in everything now anyway. It's not considered marked or different. Because, again, everybody doubles sleeves and decks. And <sighs> what's the point, right? What's the difference? You can't tell the difference in anything. So, But I just want to kind of show you guys. Uh, keep in mind when you deal with these also, you get a lot of basic land. It's not one of each. You usually get multiple duplicates of each basic land. I think even some of these, yeah, there's multiple in, the, in each... Uh, tier there so kind of some some of it's surprisingly pretty cheap but some of it's not some of it's already kind of moved up in price and kind of readjusted higher um again none of these are really gradable perfect you got a lot of little chips and dings and this and that but overall it's, it's definitely a clean light play near mint um complete set here just kind of spot checking make sure there's no other little binder dents or anything weird no it looks okay god that gold is so sensitive it's crazy really is like I'm, I'm afraid to even handle these things just because of the gold i feel like it's just like oh copy artifact um yeah i'm just happy there's not a lot of other damage to it um i do think though uh moving forward the fact that i think a lot more people are gonna be playing with these type of cards versus playing with original alpha betas and i also think the price point of this um i think it's kind of properly priced like if you have a gem mint unopened collector's edition set i think like what retails like 10 grand uh, most stores will pay between what five and seven grand range and on auction they usually sell for what eight or nine if you're lucky depending on the bidding and when it ends I mean it kind of bounces around plus or minus 10% of those numbers But I, I still you know I know a lot of people aren't gonna like this part and you can thumbs down three times do the swirly thing But I still think that there's in the short term. I don't see much more upward momentum in collector's edition cards or even in regular alpha beta arabian i mean everything's i mean it's it's inflating back up a little bit but i'm not seeing dramatic extreme swings now of course on a side note if we continue to see more kind of censorship banning cultural shifts and a lot more angry people on the internet and the, just the evolution of the way the world is with social media and culture and more cards like you know i don't know like the demonic cards and the sensitive cards, the knights or white knight, black knight, or the, the evil stuff. If these things continue to get banned or outlawed or you can't talk about it or show it, um, those are all outside variables that could definitely inflate the value of a lot more of these older cards. And nowadays, that is something that we all have to take into consideration when you deal with vintage and older products because, you know, the culture and attitude towards a lot of things can change very quickly, as we've seen with Invoke the P. You know, uh, Crusade, what was the Arabian Nights? Stone Throwing Devils. Um, White Knight, is White Knight one of them or no? Or is that just a meme? Point is, you can see immediately quick price swings because of, you know, public perceptions and changes in culture. So that is something you got to keep in mind, which can be a positive thing if your money inflates and you make more money. And it can be a negative thing. It becomes more difficult to sell the product. So keep that in mind, everybody. Uh, anyways, um, it looks very nice here. Like I said, I just want to kind of flip through and sh talk about it and discuss with everybody. Not really too much else dramatic to show in this video and this kind of first part of it. There's like, there's like 30 binders, everybody. Um, I guess we'll check out the uh, Wheel of Fortune real quick over here. Where is that? Um, there's the Shivan. Yeah, we'll do a quick uh, Wheel of Fortune check there, I figure, especially since he's on, located on the left there. Yeah, he's clean. He's good to go. So no real binder dings or issues or anything like that. And remember, if you're going to store things like this, 
keep in mind that technically storing you, these pages need to be perfectly new and clean. Like a lot of people always comment to me, Rudy, how come your Rudy from the Volt God book crazy black binders you have, how come you use regular nine ring or three ring binders with nine pocket pages? And keep in mind, whenever you guys see my old cards in pages or things like that, I have literally a half a pallet of these pages I buy in bulk from Ultra Pro. So they're all brand new and I don't reuse sleeves. Like when I take the cards out of this, I'm going to throw these pages away. I only put vintage cards in brand new sleeves so there's no dirt or grime or oils or anything inside of them when I store them long term. So that does make a huge difference, especially uh, probably in the next day or so when you guys see the next to the foil one we have of this collection, you're going to notice a quite a bit difference there. And why is, does that card look really dark? Is that, is that, oh, is that the dark mountain? I was like, why is that, maybe not, maybe it's just the light. I was like, why does that look really dark compared to the rest? Maybe it's just the lighting? That's strange. Anyway, so I want to comment that for those of you who are looking to store things long term, there's nothing wrong with binders and things like that. I personally store my binders standing up. And when I say standing up, I'll show you guys real quick. Um, so when I have all the pages in here, when I store things like this, I actually store my binders like this. So when they're inside of like a big safer vault, everything hangs freely down. So there's no pinching on either side. It's like a free, it's a natural kind of a gravity feed down. So that is kind of how I store mine. And they're all lined up like that. And obviously in a giant fireproof, whatever, blah, 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 and multiple blah, 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 safe locations, blah, blah, blah. But, but just to give you an idea of the difference, that's how I kind of uh, protect mine and look out for the binder thing. You just got to be careful. Take your time. So that's all I have to say today. I uh, thought you guys would enjoy a little just kind of a conversation video here regarding some old stuff. See an old collector's edition set come in here. Um, unfortunately, see the cons of having, you know, your power card right here on the first page. Even with this little, I don't know, protective thing. You know, it just, it can, you can damage the cards. I mean, I didn't even realize that was dented. I think that was probably dented probably being against this, but I didn't catch that. So whatever. Thanks for watching, everybody. You'll, uh, you guys will be enjoying the next few videos in this collection. Um, like I said, I think probably be about four videos to kind of really discuss and show a lot of cool things. So take care of everybody. And as always, if you have a vintage collection for sale, if you're actually still watching this this late, uh, Alpha Investments LLC at gmail.com. You can send me some pictures and prices known as the P's and P's, PP's. And uh, let me know what's going on and see if we can uh, do a deal or if we're in the same ballpark. If not, I'll point you in a different direction. And uh, be safe. Take care out there, everybody.